So there's a, a process we call a genogram, um, which is just a family map. But what it helps to do is to outline who's in the family, the relationships, that sort of thing. Okay? So we'll just um, put, this is you. Okay. Who is your dad? Uh, my dad's name is Frank. Frank. Okay. And who's your mom? Caroline. Caroline? Okay. Yeah. L-I-N-E? Yeah. Okay. And are they still together? No. No? Okay. So uh, how old were you when they separated? Um, I don't actually know if they were ever together. Okay. So we're, we're unsure if they're together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any siblings from uh, these two parents? No. Okay. And uh, do you have any siblings from other relationships that your parents may have had? Um, yeah, my mom, she, uh, she has another daughter. Okay. Older than you or younger? Younger. Younger, okay. And do you, ha do you happen to know who the father is? Uh, yeah, it's her present husband, and his name's Bill. Bill, okay. And they're married? Yep. Okay. Do you know when they got married? In 2002. 2002? I was a flower girl, but I was, an, I was an old flower girl. You are an old flower girl. Yeah. What, what was that like for you? Uh, it was kind of weird. Weird, okay. Yeah. How do you get along with Bill? Um, well, it kind of depends. See, when I was younger, he used to, like, try to buy me things. Mm -hmm. And that was good. Okay. But sometimes, like, he can be kind of rude. Yeah. And he sometimes makes remarks that are kind of inappropriate to me, but it's not so bad. I mean, he's good to my mom mm -hmm. most of the time, except for when he's really high or maybe coming down. But other than that, like, he's okay. Okay. So can we just back up a little bit to some of the things that you've said about it? So how old were you when Bill came into your life? Like I was pretty small. Mm -hmm. I might have been 10 or okay. maybe 8. I don't know. Somewhere in there. All right. So 8 to 10 years old. Now you said that your mom and Bill have had a child? Yeah. Who's that? Her name is Destiny. And how old is Destiny? Um, I think she's like maybe like 17 or so. About 17. Okay. And does she live at home? Mm. On and off. Okay, on and off at home, okay. Um, I'd like to go back to a couple of things that you said about Bill. Okay. Because uh, I'd like to understand that a little bit better. Sure. Um, you said he can be rude and he makes inappropriate remarks to you. What, what are you meaning by that? Well, like when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you're kind of going through puberty and it's a little bit weird sometimes. Okay, yeah. And he would just make comments sometimes about, like, that my body was developing. Okay. So it was just a little bit weird. But just sometimes they weren't very nice. So it wasn't so much observation that your body was developing. It was commentary about the things that were happening? Yeah. And, and just, like, he didn't need to say it. And was it said in, in, in a way that was, uh, that made you quite uncomfortable? Well, yeah. I mean, like... What 13-year-old girl wants it pointed out that she's getting some fat on her hips okay. or like maybe that she's getting boobs by her stepdad? Like, that's weird. That, that is, okay. And you felt that very uncomfortable? Yeah, so okay. I didn't really like to be around him at that time. And did that ever go any further? Was there any problems with inappropriate touch or...? No, because I after that I just started like yelling at him. Okay. Did you, was your mom, mom aware that these comments were being made? I don't see how she couldn't have been aware. She okay. was there. And did, did you and your mom ever talk about those things? No. No, okay. okay. And why do you say no? Was it just you felt uncomfortable talking to your mom about that? or? I don't know. It was just wasn't something we talked about. Okay. Um, what's your relationship with Bill like today? You know, like, we're pretty close, mm -hmm. so, like, we're, we're really close, so I might call him maybe once every two months or so. Okay. 
And like last year I needed help with a truck moving a bed and he, he arranged that. Okay. And how would you describe your relationship with your mom? Oh, uh, she's like my best friend. Okay. Um, and what about the relationship with Destiny? It's like sisters. Okay. Sometimes I talk to her. Sometimes I don't. Like I've been in a pinch before and she's, she's paid my phone bill for me. Mm -hmm. um, like, I don't know, she's okay. Do you get along with the, the two of you get along? Um, well, sometimes. Okay, so that suggests that there are times not? Well, like we get along, but we're just different people. We can be together and like spend time together, but like if I'm in a bind, I'll be, I'll be there for her if she needs something and it's, it's reciprocal, but she's not my favorite person. Okay, it, it's an okay relationship, but not a close relationship. Is that a good characterization? Yep. All right. How about your relationship with Frank? I haven't seen Frank for, I don't know, seven years or so. Okay, and why is that? Well, I don't know, like he just, like it seems like when I see him, he wants to be like so close and he's really there mm -hmm. and he's interested in me and then he just falls off the face of the earth. And then I don't see him for months at a time. And then he comes back and he doesn't know that I'm still mad from the last time when he just left okay. without warning. And then he comes back mm -hmm. and, and it just got, just got too much for me. So last time he contacted me on Facebook, I just deleted him. Okay. Again, I'd like to step back for a couple of minutes. You mentioned uh, that Bill treats your mother well when he's not high or not coming down. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, the substance that he uses? Um, he uses a lot. Like, I mean, it kind of depends. Like everybody says these days that like marijuana is going to be legal. So it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But, you know, since the time I can remember, like he's always smelled like weed. Okay. You know, I think he uses his cigarettes and he puts tobacco and marijuana in them. Okay. And he smokes that. So he has one, like, I think in the morning when he first wakes up and that's happened like as long as I can possibly, re possibly remember. Okay. And that's all day, like all day. Okay. Um, oh, except for sometimes. Um, there's this, sometimes he just gets, I don't even know like what he's using, but sometimes he just is like, he's like so nice. Mm -hmm. And then he's such a jerk. Okay. And you're not sure what? No. Okay. But Did I know you, it's you, something. You suggested he uses things besides marijuana. Oh yeah, he uses marijuana a lot. He drinks a fair bit. Mm -hmm. um, he tries to only drink on the weekends mm -hmm. um, because he can't drink at work. Okay. So he he smokes marijuana like all day mm -hmm. at work and stuff because he says it doesn't alter his ability to work. But on the weekends, like probably starting Friday night, he'll probably drink at least maybe like. Well, he says it's only like a couple beers, but that usually turns into like six to 12 on Friday. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but he usually buys a couple flats, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes two, maybe four, but they're gone by the end of the weekend. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and um, any other drugs? I know that like him and my mom, sometimes when they're gonna go partying, mm -hmm. I know that like every now and then, like when my sister was younger, they'd ask me to watch her so that they could use cocaine that night. Okay. I don't know how much they still do that. I mean, now that my sister's older, like, I mean, she doesn't need a babysitter anymore, so. Right. Okay. Has Bill been violent with your mother? Um, like the odd occasion, but nothing. And, and what does the odd occasion mean? I don't know, like sometimes growing up, you'd be like asleep and you'd hear like, I don't know, maybe once a month or, once okay. every two months, you'd be woken mm -hmm. up and you'd hear this horrible sound and maybe furniture would be being thrown and you'd go okay. downstairs. And like one time, I, one time I was like crouched on the stairs and there's like a little railing and I looked around and I could see, I saw him punch her. Mm -hmm. But like she didn't have a, any marks or anything, but like I saw it that one time, but every few months. Right, okay. I mean, there'd be years where nothing would happen. Mm -hmm. But then every once in a while, there'd be like a couple, couple big fights that you could hear. Did the police ever have to come to the house? Uh, 
I remember this one time, it was Christmas, and um, I was sleeping. And that night, my sister and my dad had gotten into a fight. And then I think I just went to bed because it was like so crazy. So I thought, well, Christmas is over. So then I went to bed and then I was sleeping. And while I was asleep, I got woken up. Oh no, before I got woken up, I heard my mom and dad yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. And then I heard like a smack that kind of sounded like someone got hit, but I didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. So then I was sleeping and then the police came and woke me up at about three o'clock in the morning and I had to write a report okay. about what happened, but like I didn't see anything. Right, okay. And have, is that the only time the police have been there? Mm, yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. Um, we've talked about Bill uh, abusing substances a little bit. Uh, and you suggested that Carolyn has a little bit, your mom? Um, yeah, I, I had to babysit. So I know that they would tell me, like, we're going to go use cocaine tonight. Can you babysit your sister? Okay. So I knew it was, like, about once a month. But I always got extra money on those nights. Mm -hmm. So, like, it was okay with me. But, yeah, so I babysit my sister. Um, so I know she did a little bit. Like, um... My mom drinks a little bit, but not as much. Every okay. once in a while, uh, I know that she used to use, well, she told me when she was a kid, she used to use meth because she, on it for like a summer, because she lived on the streets until mm -hmm. she went into a rehab. And since then, she doesn't like to be used too much. Okay. Oh, and when you say as a kid, how old was she when she went into rehab? Uh, I think she was like 16 or 17. Okay. So about the age destiny is at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about any history with Frank? Like, I know that he drinks a fair bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much. Okay. I know that he likes to smoke weed. I don't know how much. Right. Okay. I don't, I don't really talk to him that much anymore. I don't know. Okay. I'd, I'd like to just add some people here into the family history. Let's, let's put uh, Carolyn's mom and dad up in here. Are they still alive? would be your grandparents on your mom's side. Right. Are they together? Right now they are, yeah. Okay, so there's been times when they haven't been? Yeah, it's been on and off, but I think they've been together now for another, about a year or so. Okay. And does your, does your mom have any brothers or sisters? No. She's an only child? Yeah. Okay. And do you know uh, your grandparents' names? Uh, grandma and Grandpa. No, don't know their names. Okay, Grandma and Grandpa. Okay. Any substance abuse problems with grandma and grandpa? Well, I know they drink a lot. Okay. Um, but outside of drinking a lot, like, I don't know. All right. Okay. Do you happen to know Frank's uh, parents? Uh, I know that my uh, grandpa Charles, mm -hmm. he's dead. Okay. And he died of cancer. Mm -hmm. And that he died like when I was really small. And then my grandma, Eva, mm -hmm. uh, she's still alive, but like I don't really know anything about her. Okay. I know but, that sometimes they say she's crazy. That's okay. the only thing I know about her. And what do you think they mean by crazy? I think they said that like she has erratic, crazy mood swings and out of nowhere, she just starts, starts screaming her head off. But okay. then like sometimes, well, like in those times where she's screaming her head off, she'll also go out and spend so much money. Like she'll spend money that they have never seen and then it takes them five years to save up that money again. Okay. So. Okay. Is anyone else in the family like her that you know of? You know, my mom used to say when I was being bad mm -hmm. and screaming my head off, she'd say, you're just like your dad who's crazy like his mom, but like nothing ever really okay. other than that. All right. Did Frank have brothers and sisters? Yeah, but I don't know them. Okay. And um, let me add, uh, if I might, the relationships that you've had. And I'm thinking of somebody you've lived with, somebody you may have had a child with, somebody you've been married with. Um, um, okay. Well, my last partner. 
uh, your, your most recent partner. Yeah, my, my most recent partner. Who's yeah. that? Uh, Jordan. Jordan. And were you married with Jordan? Or? No, we just lived together. We're like basically married, but we weren't. How long did you live together? Five years. About five years. When did you separate? Just recently, like last month. Okay. And um, uh, 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 what's Jordan's last name? Franklin. Franklin. And have you had any children with Jordan? Yeah, we have two. Two children. Who's the oldest? Selena. Selena. Now, I think if I remember from the records, that was spelled C-E-L-E-N-A. Have I got that correctly? S. S. Is it? Okay. And how old is Selena? Mm, she's about seven. Seven. So she's in school in grade? She's in grade one. Grade one. Okay. And then the, the other child is? Daniel. Daniel. D-A-N-I-E-L? Yeah. Okay. And how old is Daniel? He's four. Daniel is four. Is he in preschool at this point? Yep. Okay. And, and which last name do the children have? Mine. Yours, uh, which is Williams, correctly? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Have you had other relationships, uh, common law or marital relationships, or someone with children with another person? Uh, well, before him, I lived with my girlfriend for about two years. Okay. Your girlfriend, and, and that was an intimate relationship? Yeah. Okay. What's her name? Morgan. Morgan. Okay. Um, and that was about two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. We were dating for about four, but we lived together only the last two. Okay. So given that, do you identify uh, in what way in terms of sexuality? I, I'd say I'm bisexual. Bisexual? Okay. I mean, like, how can you really tell what you are? You just are attracted to who you're attracted to. Okay. Um, and has Jordan had prior relationships? Uh, yeah. Uh, serious ones? Uh, does he have any children with someone else? Or? No. Okay. Um, what does Jordan do for a living? He like helps build houses. So house construction. Yeah. Okay. And, and are you working as well? No. Okay. Um, I guess I should have asked if you're working outside the home. Being looking after kids is a job, isn't it? Yes, it is a job. It is a job, right? Okay. Um, what did Bill do for a living? You said that he was able to use the marijuana at... Uh... Oh, he did like landscaping and building houses too. Okay. Okay. Um, how far did you go in school? Um, I completed my grade 11. Okay. And what caused you to stop at that point? Yeah, it was just like really hard. Okay. And, you know, like... I just didn't really want to go, and, and people at school were really mean. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what's the point? And like other kids had more money, so when I would go, my clothes, I just didn't fit in. Okay. Um, and um, when you say you didn't fit in, was that something that was around grade 11, or had that been something that had been true for you throughout school for many years? or? It was true for like most of my school, I didn't really fit in, but finally I realized I was old enough that I didn't have to go. Okay. And like I skipped school a lot, but finally I was just like, what's the point? Right. Okay. So I stopped going. And, have, and after that, what did you do? So you, you left grade 11, what did you do? Um, I kind of bounced around, like I worked at the theater for a little bit, which is good, just got lots of free popcorn and got to go okay. see movies right. whenever sure. you wanted. Okay. Um, I worked at a bar for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I worked like at a nightclub for a while. And I didn't really like that. Uh, there was a little while where I just didn't really do anything. I just, you know, got money from the government. Okay. And then I got another job at Denny's for a bit. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. Um, until, like, every, it just really started to slow down. So they need me more, so they let me go. And then I've just been kind of, you know, then I was pregnant kind of by that time. So I thought I just won't work and get the money from the government. Okay. Um, and are you currently on social assistance? Yep. Okay. Uh, by the way, I just want to be clear, Jordan and Morgan are the only two significant intimate relationships you've had? Yeah, like I've dated other people, but nothing that really matters. Okay, all right. We, has substance abuse been an issue for you? You've talked about the stuff that your mother did and your father, your stepfather as well as your father. Has it been an issue for you? Mm, depends what you mean by issue, but I wouldn't say it's been an issue. Okay. What, uh, do you use? 
Like, I mean, I like to drink and smoke a little weed sometimes, but. Okay. Can you quantify that a little bit for me? I don't know, like have a few drinks a week. Okay, what's a few? The reason I ask is, you know, I, I have some people who define it as two or three, and I have some people who define it as 10 or 12. So what's a few for you? Well, I, I don't know. When I had the kids, I was hardly drinking at all. Okay. So maybe like one drink a night. Yes, okay. And then now I don't have the kids. So like the last couple of weeks, I've maybe had like a six pack mm -hmm. a night. Okay. And how often are you using the marijuana? Um... Yeah, so since Jordan left, like Jordan used to smoke weed in the morning, mm -hmm. like at lunch, at night. And so once the kids were in bed, if he smoked weed, I would go smoke it with him. Okay. Um, but since, since he's been gone, I haven't smoked it at all. Um, so do you think that uh, Jordan uses pretty regularly then? Oh, yeah, Jordan uses it all the time. All but the time. like because, you know, it's going to be legal soon. So, like, basically, it just doesn't matter. It's like the same thing as drinking. Okay. What brought child welfare into your family? You know, it was really unfortunate. Got in this fight one day. It wasn't mm -hmm. a big deal. I kind of got a little crazy. I might have screamed a little too loud. The neighbor heard. She called. She called? I don't know who she called. Maybe well, the police. Okay. What's the relationship between you and Jordan been like? Has there been volatility? Um, has he ever hit you? Uh, what's it been like? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes to which? The volatility, your hit, or both? Well, I mean, he's hit me a few times. Okay. And when you say he's hit you a few times, can you describe what that looks like? Well, I mean, it kind of varies. Mm -hmm. Like, there's times where he'll just come up and, like, I don't know. But then there's times, like, we'll be fighting. Mm -hmm. There was this one time where my girlfriend and I, my girlfriend came in from out of town and we wanted to go out. And right away, he didn't like what I was wearing after we got dressed and we were going to go out. So. Uh, he, he made a comment and my friend, like, she didn't like what he said. So she started mouthing off to him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can you stop this? Like, you're going to upset him. So anyway, she kept mouthing off to him and then he mouthed off back to her. And so they just had this screaming match each other. And then he was mad at me and I knew it and we went out and he was texting me all night. And mm -hmm. I didn't respond to his text because my girlfriend was in town. I just wanted to have a nice night with her. So we went out and he was so mad about what I was wearing. And then we got home and when I got home, He'd been drinking, like, a lot. Mm -hmm. And she was there, and right away we walk in the door, and she starts mouthing off to him. And I'm like, you have to stop this, because he's going to get mad at me. And so that night, like, it got, after she went to bed, it got pretty bad. Like, he was really upset about what I was wearing, and the next thing I know, like, he had me pushed up against the wall, threatening to kill me. Um, and that right. was probably one of the worst incidents. Like, he kind of choked me and, and, and stuff. That was about that was about two years ago. About two years ago. So you describe that as the worst. Yeah. How often though do the two of you um, have yelling matches? Say. Well, whenever we have a disagreement, okay. usually we have a yelling match. So is that once a week, twice a week, five times a week, once a month? Oh, we yell at each other like every day. Every day, okay. Yeah. And I mean, that's a couple's fight, right? Okay. And is it a pretty uh, angry kind of yelling or is it just sort of uh, lipping oh, well, each mean, other off? I mean, if you saw Jordan, like everybody thinks he's angry. Everybody does, but like he's just really sweet. He just has a really hard outer shell. Okay, so observers would say Jordan has an anger problem. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Well, anger problem might be a bit extreme. Okay. Angry guy? Well, he just kind of looks scary, but he's really soft inside. Looks, okay. Yeah. And how often does he hit you? Well, he, he only hits sometimes. Like, he's more likely to, like, hold my arm really tight. Okay. So, like, really hurts. Or maybe he'll choke me. But, like, as far as hitting me goes, maybe only, like, I mean, there was a time a few years ago where it was, like, daily. 
-hmm. But recently, in the last year, it's maybe only been like twice. Okay, and, but you described he would grab your arm or he would choke you. How often would that occur? A lot more often, like probably he would grab my arm a, a few times a week. Like okay. it doesn't really hurt. Okay. It's just kind of uncomfortable. It's a bit forceful. Yeah. Okay. And where are the children when this stuff's happening? Well, it depends. Cause like sometimes if he's grabbing my arm, no one knows he's doing it except for me. So they might be right there. Okay. Um, but I mean, if it's a really big fight, usually a really big fights happen at night. Like after there's a couple drinks, mm -hmm. um, the kids are in bed. And so usually, usually they're sleeping. Okay. So this, is a, I got to ask a difficult question, Amber. Okay. Um, do you think that what goes on between you and Jordan is okay? Oh, I've had other people tell me that they think it's kind of, that they don't think it's right. But, mm -hmm. you know, like we have a really, well, I mean, that's why we're in this position where it's only me you're talking to because he had to leave because all these professionals say that if we're together, I'm not going to get my kids back. So, like everybody's saying that it's a bad thing, but like they don't know what he's like okay. when they're not around. They don't see all the nice things that mm -hmm. he does, all the sweet things he does. So like, I mean, is it maybe not good, but there's so many good qualities about him that it's really like nobody sees that. I'm just mm -hmm. told that it's not good what he's doing. So we have to not be together. Do you agree with the professionals to say that? I mean, I would love to not have bruises on my arm. That'd be great. Or I would love to not be hurt. That'd be great. But like, he's just such a sweet guy that Okay. It makes me really sad that we have to be apart. What's it like for the children to see that happening to their mother? Well, they don't see it very much. But they do see it. I mean, sometimes my oldest one, I mean, she's smart, so she'll say things like, Daddy, I think you're hurting mommy. But that only happened like two or three times. Okay. She doesn't like it when it happens. Okay. But I mean, I try to make it so she doesn't see that. So you try to protect her from it? Yeah. Okay. Like I wait, I want, like if I know there's going to be a fight, I'll put her to bed. Okay. So Amber, that kind of suggests to me that you know this is not good because you're taking steps to protect your children from witnessing it. Well, I know it's not good that it's happening, but like it's not, doesn't mean it's a problem. Okay. Doesn't that, that sort of seems a bit of a contradiction to me. Well, like, it doesn't have to be a problem if I keep my kids protected from it. I'm okay with it. I can see the other good things that he's doing. Okay. So for you, it's a balance. Uh, there are some good things about Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, he does hurt you at times. The children are at times exposed to it. And you take steps to t try to protect the children from witnessing it. Yeah, I mean, if I, and especially, like, if I know he's in a really bad mood, I have my neighbor... Sally and she's great and she runs a day home and she's she's like the most wonderful super mom one day mm -hmm. I would like to be like her she's she's wonderful and you know she said that if the kids if I just ever need the kids to be dropped off she's just gonna let me do it for free which is so nice because I don't have any money to pay her so I do know like if there's a day where he's in a particularly bad mood or something I'll just drop the kids off at her house and sometimes they've even slept there if, if it's just too bad so you, so you have a backup plan to protect the children from being able to, to, to protect the children from being exposed to this. Yeah, like and if he's Sally's, in a really bad mood and I think it's gonna go more than he's gonna squeeze my arm, then just, okay. just they'll just go to the neighbors. All right, so what I'm hearing you describe is that you read him. Yeah. You predict the probable behavior. Yeah. And then you take steps to get the children out. Yeah. Because it's not safe for the children. Right, the kids don't need to be around that. I mean, I was around things going on. It felt horrible to be up in my room or to be peeking around, and I don't want my kids to see that. Okay. So your parents were, were uh, had conflict like this? Yeah. You didn't like it, so you would hide yourself? That's right. You're trying to ensure your children are protected from this? Yeah, I mean, I used to have to protect my sister all the time. I would go to into her room, and we'd play mm -hmm. games, or, you know, I'd go sleep in her bed and put my hands over her ears so she couldn't hear. Okay. So I don't want my kids to have to do that together. All right. And so at what point do you think that Celine is going to start protecting Daniel? I don't know. 
Has she already started to do that? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Selena, you said it's in grade one. Where does she go to school? Uh, she goes just school down the street. And what school was that? Uh, it's Fish Creek School. Fish Creek School? Okay. Is that a Catholic school or is that a public school? Oh, you know what? She's going to Father Willihan. That's right. That's right. I always get those two confused. That's a Catholic school. Oh, Father Willihan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Father Willihan. So are you Catholic? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm Catholic. Okay. And do you go to Mass or do you participate in church? or? I used to before I met Jordan, but he just hates it. Okay. Like, I'm not, uh, I used to go a lot, like, going to church. I like the singing. The song's are really fun. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that when I was a little kid, I never went to, like, your first communion or whatever that right. is. I got baptized, but I know, like, when they go and they do the prayer yeah. thing, mm -hmm. um, I don't get the bread that they give you. I have to, yeah, I have to go arms, like yeah. this and cross my arms. Yeah, okay. Yeah because I never got my first communion. So okay. I was baptized. I have like this little dress that I wore. It's all white and it's really cute. Mm -hmm. And I have my little bow still that I wore okay. in it. Yep. Um, but yeah, so I was baptized. I really like going, but Jordan hates it. But I love the singing. The singing right. is so good. But Selena and Dan Daniel uh, baptized? Yeah. And how did Jordan feel about that? He didn't like it, but because I basically begged and he gave it. Right. Like, okay. we don't go to church. I promised I would get them baptized, but we didn't have to go to church. And I said, that way we have more options for schools. Okay. And we do. We have two. That's right. We have two. We have Fish Creek and Father Wilhelm very close together. And so. So um, typically, if I recall, what goes on in a Catholic school is that they'll begin to prepare the children for um, First Communion. Is that likely to happen in Father Wilhelm, or do they leave that to, to the parish? Well, they do a little bit. Like, they do um, Our Father in the morning, right? Okay. and there's like a prayer uh, mm -hmm. every once in a while, like a couple times a year they have an assembly, and right. at the assemblies they'll do a big mass. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still really up to the parents about, oh, okay. you know, if they're going to keep going down right. there. I mean, it's going to be encouraged, but we're just not there yet, so I'm, I'm not pushing it. Okay. Um, I'm going to step into a couple of different areas uh, just to explore some of the things we've talked about a little bit of the margins. Uh, you talked about uh, the crazy uh, uh, grandmother and, the, oh, yeah. uh, and, and your mother saying that your father, your biological father was crazy. Uh, and then she makes reference uh, to similar behaviors with yourself. Have you ever uh, seen a mental health professional? Oh, when I was growing up, I saw the school counselor and the doctor and another doctor. I have seen so many and they're all idiots. Okay. What do they say? What do, what do these idiots say? Um, something wrong with you, or like you just got to change this or do that. Okay. I mean, some of the, I met, I had a couple. They were great listeners, and they were really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, even sometimes things change. Like I learned how to work out some of my problems. Okay. So there has been some benefit. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen so there was. You know, for every one that was good, there was like three that were horrible. Mm. So that must have been very frustrating. Well, yeah, especially because the one that I really liked, the first one I ever met, like I trusted her. She was really good. She didn't tell my teachers the things that we talked about. And then, like, I totally understand. She got pregnant. And good for her. Like, I was happy for her. But then she had to leave. And by the time she went back to school, I was leaving that school and having to go to another school. Okay. But she was there for me. Mm -hmm. She made me want to go to school. We made, like, deals. We would, like, kind of bet. The, like the outcomes of what we did, like she would like kind of like she would gamble with me about what would happen if I went to school, and like our gamble, like what I could win would be like cookies mm -hmm. or like other treats, and then it was really sweet because I never got cookies or treats. So then, if I went to class, like we would do these gambling things, and if I was right, I would get a cookie. If she was right, okay. I would get a cookie. Basically, I always just got cookies. Right. So along the way with all of these professionals, has anybody suggested there's a, there's a mental health diagnosis or a mental health issue or? Oh yeah, I've been told you are a drug addict. I've been told you have bipolar disorder. I've been told you have borderline personality disorder. I've been told you're depressed. I've been told you have ADHD. I've been told you have post-traumatic stress disorder. I've been told I have everything. Okay, and how has it been for you to have all of these diagnoses tossed at you? Like, I just wonder if they know what they're talking about. Okay. Did any of them make sense to you? Did, were there any of those diagnoses along the way where you said, well, actually, you know, that does kind of describe me? 
Um, well, my counselor in the school that I was telling you about, right. when I was young, I think I must have been like 13 or 14, and I was feeling so sad and like really guilty. I felt like so guilty. Everything was my fault, and I felt really worthless. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't ever want to do anything. And I remember this one time we went and we created a chart right. of everything that I did in the day from like getting out of bed and brushing my teeth and, and it would be like I got dressed and then it would be I went I took the bus to school and I got to school and then I went to class and it took the whole day and it was all week. We spent a lot of time doing this every day. She spent every day with me and we'd go through and we'd create like what I did that day. And then she started to help me see like when I got out of bed by myself, when I was 13, like I knew how to set an alarm. I got up, I brushed my teeth, I showered. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I even showered in cold water when the electricity was shut off at my house and there wasn't even hot water. Like that I did all these things and I started to see like I didn't have to feel guilty or worthless anymore because she like she checked off all the spots for me that I was doing good things and so I started to feel better at that time. So what she said is I was depressed and then I wasn't depressed anymore. Okay, and that made sense to you? That made sense and like she explained what depression was. Like she told me about how I wasn't gonna feel happy, I was gonna feel worthless, how I might also like oversleep sometimes or under eat mm -hmm. sometimes and feel like I wanted to die sometimes and like she put it all together right. and it made sense and then it all went away. Okay, and how, and how about now? How, do, how, how are you feeling now? Well, like right now I feel like really sad kind of like then because like child welfare says Jordan and I have to break up. Okay. Like the only difference now is like I don't feel like I'm worthless, but I still feel sad all the time and I cry a lot. Right. Because like child welfare said, I have to leave my best friend. Okay. And the children are presently in foster care, is that correct? Yeah. How often do you get to see them? Every day. Every day, okay. How is Selena doing in school, by the way? Ah, uh, yeah, she's actually doing really well. Is she? They okay. say she's really smart. Okay. Okay, but she kind of kind of screwed up and she like had to kind of do grade one she kind of did a little bit grade one last year mm -hmm. and then so she's in grade one again um last year she didn't do very well but this year okay. as she brings me in her report cards and like her her little things and there's like stickers always and they say 10 out of 10 all the time mm -hmm. and like the just things like little these little like i don't even know what they she just always has like happy stickers on little paper she brings me and the teacher says she's trying so hard yeah, she's okay. doing really well. Okay. What happened last year that she had to repeat? Yeah, that was kind of bad. So last year, um, I broke my leg walking her to school at the first snowfall, mm -hmm. and it was like a clean break, like my leg. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it was really bad. Like, just, it was so, I couldn't walk for your leg. I did in November, and I couldn't walk until... February really. Wow. It was a really bad break. Mm. And so I couldn't take her to school. So I'm curious why wouldn't Jordan take her to school? He was supposed to. And? He didn't. Okay. Do you know why? So it was kind of my fault. Because if I didn't break my leg, she would have been able to go to school. Okay. So he was really mad at me. He was mad at you for breaking your leg. It was my job, like he goes to work, he makes the money, he puts a roof over our head, he feeds us. I mean, my government money is like, just not even enough to live on, right? So that's one of the reasons we're not married is so that I could keep getting the government money. Okay. Because he lets me keep most of it for me and the kids. But I mean, yeah, it was my part of our bargain was to go and take the kids, right? take okay. the kids to school. And then he was just so mad, like you take her to school like maybe once a week. Right, okay. So uh, we're almost out of time for today, but there's a couple of other things I'd just like to uh, understand um, before we finish today. Um, were the pregnancies of Selena and Daniel planned? Selena wasn't. Selena wasn't. And what was your reaction to um, being pregnant with Selena? Well, at first I was scared. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jordan's gonna be mad. But then I was really happy, like I thought, you know, I haven't been very good at many other things in my life. I right. thought maybe, maybe I can be good at being a mom. Okay. That's did, why I want my girl back. Okay. How did Jordan react? Not very good. Not very good. And how did he treat you during the pregnancy? Kind of depended. Like at the beginning, he tried to make me have an abortion. Yes. Okay. And so like, 
he kind of like that's part of a time where he would hit me more often mm -hmm. because then he thought I would have to have an abortion right but I didn't mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't very good but then once I was three months pregnant he stopped hitting me because he thought if we were gonna have the baby then like we should be good to it so then like for the rest of the pregnancy he was really good and then we got excited and we made like because he works and makes stuff right like he made this um baby cradle thing mm -hmm. and it was beautiful okay. and he was so proud of it and then he was so nice for the rest of the pregnancy and how did he react uh, did he attend the hospital with him yeah and and how did he react with the birth he was perfect okay so he, he was a little bit afraid to hold her because his hands are really calloused and yucky and they shake sometimes and okay. he was afraid he was going to drop her so like he would only hold her if I was there too. Right. Okay. So uh, was Selena born full term? Yeah. Okay. Were there any problems? No. She no? was perfectly healthy. Okay. Was there any alcohol or drug use in the pregnancy? As soon as I, before I knew I was pregnant, I drank. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I stopped drinking, I stopped smoking, I stopped using all drugs. I was completely clean. Okay. How far into the pregnancy did you learn that you were pregnant? Oh, it wasn't very far because I noticed I missed my period and it was like really regular mm -hmm. and then I didn't get it and I went to the doctor immediately okay and you had care from a doctor throughout the pregnancy yeah I went to, to cups okay. and they took really good care of me and they had this parenting program there that I took there too okay good what about the pregnancy of Daniel was it planned yeah okay we, we decided that we should because um, I was an only child I didn't well kind of an only child but I wanted like two kids from the same parents okay so yeah we planned them and did um, uh, did you use any alcohol or drugs in the pregnancy of Daniel no, no? and was he born full term as well yeah and was uh, Jordan at the hospital as well yeah and were there any problems with Daniel no no so so both pregnancies full term both pregnancies children were healthy at birth did you breastfeed or bottle feed the children breastfeed both and then after about two months with both switched to formula okay so breastfed for the first couple of months and then how did you feel after each pregnancy were you happy or uh you know one of the doctors said I had PPD I didn't know what that meant after which pregnancy uh, after Selena after Selena that's called postpartum depression well that makes sense okay so because I felt like kind of like my feet were stuck in mud kind of like I felt like in high school mm -hmm. but I felt so scared. I felt so scared I was going to do something wrong all the time. And how did it work out? With, Good. With, she was fine. Okay. And what was your interaction like with her when you were feeling this way? Um, I think, well, I was scared it was really bad. So I had my parenting coach from Cups come over mm -hmm. to see if it was okay. as bad as I thought it was. And right. she said it wasn't bad. Okay. So she told me it was okay. All right. And I was just really feeling down and worried, but she said I was doing a good job. Okay. Like I would play with her toes and go like, one little piggy goes to market, the right. other little piggy goes, oh, we would play that game. Mm -hmm. And then when she would cry, I would, I would always get up, even though I just wanted to lay in bed forever, like I wouldn't. Or if I was having a really bad day where I didn't want to get, to get out of bed, I would bring her into bed so I could still feed her and nurse her and, and right. be there and play with her without having to move. Okay. And what about with Daniel? Yeah, I felt kind of that way, but not as much. Not as much. Okay. How was Jordan doing when you were this occupied uh, with uh, the needs of each of the children? Well, he didn't say it. But I think he was jealous. Okay. And how did that show to you? Like, did that change the way he treated you? Or? Um, well, he was, like, nice. Okay. I don't think he wanted to hurt me because I had to take care of the kids. Right, okay. I don't know. I just didn't see a lot of them. Like, he slept on the couch a lot. Right, okay. And I slept in the bedroom with the, with the baby. Because mm -hmm. the baby would cry and he had to work, so... He was often out on the couch. Okay. Um, a couple of final questions. Is, um, is Jordan working with child welfare or is? Well, that's part of the reason we had to split up. Like I want to have my babies back. 
and yeah. he thinks that child welfare is an idiot. Okay. And, you know, we've been working with child welfare for on and off for what, two years, three years, whenever that choking incident happened. And, mm. you know, we keep trying, but they told us that unless I leave him, like I'm probably not gonna get my kids back. Okay. Have you and Jordan done any relationship therapy? We tried once. How many times, how many sessions? Twice. Two sessions, and, and what, it didn't work well, or? She thought the therapist was an idiot. Okay. And she kind of was. Do you think he'd be willing to try it again? Well, it depends what they were trying to make us do. What did you think the first therapist was attempting to do? Make him stop smoking weed. Make him stop smoking weed, okay. Um, do you think he would be open to another try? If it wasn't about him smoking weed. Okay. Not about him smoking weed. All right. Okay. So there might be some conditions on his participation. Maybe. Like, we talk on the phone sometimes, and he says he really misses me, and he's sorry, but there's some things he just can't. He just can't do. Okay. Um, do either of you or Jordan have a criminal record? Jordan does. Okay. And do you know what it's for? He was in this fight, like, just after he turned 18. Okay. And was he charged with something at that point? Or? Yeah, assault. Assault. Because he started it. Okay. Did he end up in jail or? Uh, I don't know. Okay. And none with yourself. No. Okay. Um, one question I didn't ask about mental health: Have you ever attempted suicide? No. Uh, any self harm? Thought about. It. I tried to cut myself once, but like, it really hurt. So okay. I didn't want to do it again. All right. Okay. So at this point, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. Can I have my kids back? Can't answer that at this point. I'm glad you've asked the question because, um, as you remember, when we did the consent form, I'll pro finish the assessment, write the recommendations, and then we'll meet with Amber, the social worker, and yourself, and we'll go over the recommendations. But we've got a lot more work to do in this assessment. As I said, there's some questionnaires I'd like you to do, and there'll be some more questions I'd like to ask about uh, uh, your history the next time that we meet. Um, but I will tell you what I recommend when we're done, and you'll have an opportunity to ask me and the child welfare worker about my recommendations. Do you have any other questions at this point? Okay, is there anything that we haven't covered today that you feel we really should cover at this point? Um, just that, will you ask if Jordan's working with child welfare? Yes. And not really, but I am. Okay. So you, you're trying to put the effort in to make sure the kids come back to you. Is that what you're saying to me? Yeah, I have like this envelope of certificates that I can bring to you if you want. Sure, let's have a look at those. I'll bring them to you next time. Okay. And the next time as well, uh, we'll do the consent form so that I can talk to the school. Um, and what about Daniel? He's in preschool? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I also want to talk to the preschool. Okay. He's really smart. He's really smart as well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we'll go downstairs and book for the next time that you come. All right? Okay. So now that you've had an opportunity to watch the interview, um, you may, in the assignment, also want to note the things that you thought weren't handled very well or if you thought there were some things that should have been explored but weren't explored. But have a look now at the write-up uh, format that you've been given on Blackboard for how the assignment should be done and you can begin filling in that format for the assignment. Now one of the things we didn't do in this session is uh, talk about what interventions might be appropriate and whether or not Amber was going to be agreeable to those interventions. But in the assignment you'll note that you're going to be asked to contemplate in, uh, what you think might be appropriate interventions and certainly there's lots of information in this interview that would help you sort out what those interventions might be. Uh, and you'll be asked to find resources uh, to have those interventions delivered. And you're also being asked to find two peer-reviewed articles from within the last five years that would support uh, the recommendations that you're going to make in your write-up. 